Hi there, I have sensors all over the house and the garden and for some time now I've been using a readily available um, garden sensor device based on Bluetooth. I hate Bluetooth with a vengeance. Um, range etc. Uh, these things used to be dirt cheap about 7 euros. They're now, I don't know, maybe twice that at least. Anyway. It's stood the test of time in terms of the sensors being waterproof, etc. You stick it in a pot, plant pot, and it will tell you the moisture level in the plant pot. That's it, dead simple. It's nice and small, but it's Bluetooth. So I've been looking for alternatives for a long time. So I went off to AliExpress and found this monster. The reason I'm doing a video is so you can get a sense of scale. This is a Zigbee soil sensor. Why Zigbee? Because I have Zigbee devices all over the place, each one of which acts, as, if you like, as a repeater. So, and I've got a Zigbee device outside. Um, so I can handle Zigbee anywhere. Right, okay, so I opened this up. A bit worried at first when I actually saw the size of it. What a monster. <laughs> That'll give you an idea of how they compare. This uses a CR2032. This uses a simple pair of AA batteries. I've actually put a couple of uh, Everred Lithiums in there. Um, expected life, I believe. What are they claiming now? Um, I think it's a Last for over one year. And with, with these batteries, it will last well over that. Three sensors, the covers come off and they just a stainless steel. Again, they just go straight into the soil. Um, I think I'll be putting this in a slightly bigger plant pot than the other one. Anyway, so was I going to have to use this special app? No. I want to use Zigbee 2 MQTT, which is what I use for everything else. It sits on a Raspberry Pi. Um, I have a Sonoff Zigbee dongle, and then obviously all the Zigbee devices act as repeaters. So what did I do? I simply put a battery in here, set it up to use Zigbee 2 MQTT wouldn't work, said it was unsupported. The fact that it picked it up, I thought naively, oh, well, it mustn't work then. Anyway, there's a button on here, and on most of these devices, if you long press a button, that acts as a pairing button. So I held, held that in for several seconds, and a little red light to start a flash. Went back to Zigbee, to MQTT, fully supported. No problem at all. Came up with the usual indecipherable name, which I'm about to change in front of you. Anyway, it's sitting there. It's paired. Let's see if I can get this up and running on the screen. Okay, so I hope you can see my cursor. Down at the bottom here, you should see this device. OXA4, whatever it is to see. There it is. and in Zigbee 2 uh, MQTT, there is even a picture of this device. So, all I had to do once I set it up uh, is rename it to something usable. We'll call it, what shall we call it? Rename it to uh, Zigbee. Soil sensor, as I only have the one. And there it is, Zigbee Soil Sensor. So if we go to Zigbee Soil Sensor and see where it exposes, it's exposing the temperature and the soil moisture content. Battery level 100%, battery state 
high. Let me take this outside, stick it in a plant pot. I'll have to edit the video while I go outside, but I'll stick it in a plant pot and let's see what happens. App response time 60 seconds. Ah, and there it is. The moisture is now showing at 4% and I'm sure over a period of time that will go up and up and up. So it's actually responding. The temperature, because I've put it outside, has gone up to 29 degrees. How accurate this is, is anybody's guess, but 